And welcome to another Today Cooking Show here at 3ABN. My name is Melody Cavanish, Chef Melody Cavanish, and I'm here with the half of our ministry, Rindel Cavanish, which is my husband, and he's the official taster, in Amen. case you didn't know. <laughs> Rindel loves to taste, eat food, and I'm glad he does because he helps me with a lot of my recipes. Yes. So this is a new <clears throat> burger that we have created. I have created, I should say, and my husband loves to eat it. This now, how is many burgers do you make? Well, this is my fourth. That's what I thought. Well, well, no, I created one yesterday. So <laughs> uh, it, by accident, because right. it was something I needed, um, I have a special diet needs right now. Mm -hmm. And so I created a new burger yesterday. So this is four of five. Four or five. I, probably the last. I called this the ultimate or the awesome burger. So hopefully it. How did, how did you get started with this last last burger? My husband has a friend. He's part of a Zoom with his classmates. Now, Rinda, when did you graduate? Do I have to say that? <laughs> 1965. 1965 is when he graduated. And I love it because all his friends are online, you know, and they're doing these Zoom classes. I get so tickled <laughs> at them. One of them, Larry, sent me an email and he said, Melody, I've seen this uh, recipe uh, on Facebook. Uh, no, I think it was Google. He ran into this recipe. He said, can you make this vegan? Can you do something like this? So I said, sure, sure I can do it. Get, send it to me. <laughs> oh, my. And I got in the kitchen, I always pray before I start a recipe Amen. and ask God to give me what I need, the knowledge to make the recipe. Mm -hmm. And it really turned out great. <laughs> I was proud of it. And we had a Zoom class to where I did the burger for them on Zoom and they really <laughs> liked it. They were very receptive to it and glad that we did that recipe. So um, this is my awesome burger. And Rindell, if you could read the uh, ingredients for us. We're going to get started on this recipe. Eight ounces mushrooms chopped, one cup onions diced, one teaspoon onion powder, one teaspoon granulated garlic, one cup lentils lightly cooked and drained, one cup black beans cooked and drained, one cup garbanzos cooked and drained, one cup beets cooked and roughly chopped, one quarter cup nutritional yeast flakes, one half cup oats, one quarter to one third cup chopped fresh parsley, one tablespoon heaping fresh rosemary chopped, one teaspoon chipotle powder, one eighth teaspoon cayenne, salt to taste, and one tablespoon packed tapioca starch. That was a lot of uh, ingredients, wasn't it? <laughs> but they're good. <laughs> they are. And you know, um, this is the first burger recipe that I created, Rindle, that doesn't have fat. There's no added fat like nuts, seeds, uh, avocado. I don't normally use oil in my cooking, but this is absolutely no fat added to this recipe. And you can't tell the difference. You can't. It really is hearty. I mean, it sticks with you. Now, for the sake of time, because we are on TV, I went ahead and sauteed my mushrooms and my onions. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use just a little bit of water and enough to saute them down to where there's no liquid because we don't want this too wet. So I'm actually going to let you get started here, Rendell. Let me get this off for you. Um, and we're just going to dump and I'm going to give you a spoon so you don't have to, okay, use your hands. You're ahead of me. You're ahead of me today. <laughs> now, that is 
the lentils. And when I cook the lentils, folks, I just barely cook these lentils because I want them to be nice and dry and I need something for a little crunch. I give you the garbanzos and the beets. The beets add some really good color. Beets are good anytime. Oh, I know. I love beets. You and I both do. And of course, the nutritional yeast flakes. Now, I went ahead and put my onion and garlic powder together for the sake of just having too many dishes. This is the chipotle and the cayenne. That's the one I have trouble pronouncing. Yeah, it's okay. But you, you don't have a problem eating it, do no. you? No, you don't. <laughs> And then <clears throat> do about half of that little, uh, maybe a little more, because I think I put too much in there. You've got it. And then we are going to add my favorite parsley. And we had rosemary already. And folks, I like to use fresh when I can. So I am going to ask my husband to get started on the food processor here. This is so hard. In you go. <laughs> Hang on. It's that, not as noisy as a Vitamix. Oh my, <laughs> no, 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 no. Nothing like a Vitamix. And see, it's blending in there nice. Right. Let's see. I'm gonna move some of that down a little bit. It doesn't have to go much at all. It smells really it nice. It smells good even before it's cooked, doesn't it? I'm just going to pulse it a little bit. If you'll take that lid off for me, we're going to pour it right in here. All right. I'm going to give you the dirty job. How about that? Get rid of that for me. Look at that. It actually almost looks like hamburger meat. I was going to say, it already looks like meat. That, that, with the color of, you can use beets, you can use red beans, you can use kidney, and a lot of time that will change the color of sure. the beet too. Now I'm going to add just, I, am, I only like, that's the only salt I've added to the recipe. That's what the uh, recipe said, salt, salt to, to taste. taste. Now I'm going to let you stir that while I get my gloves on. I like to get my hands in the food, folks. <laughs> Rendell likes to get his hands on the food. I just like to get my hands in it. <laughs> we make a great team, don't we? Yes, we do. I like to cook, now, and you're glad I do. I was going to ask you about some of those burgers that are at some of the major burger stores. What, are, are you mean, what uh, is the benefit of this health-wise as opposed to uh, the ones that you can buy prepared that are vegan? Uh, number the one, pros number and one cons? the stabilizers, you know, the additives that they put in them. And what I've noticed most of all is whenever you're buying these burgers already made, you would not believe how much fat is in these burgers. I know one of the popular burgers that's out right now that you see at some of your restaurants, your chains, and they're starting to sell them in the store, they have over 75% fat. Wow. And that's not fat from the product, that's fat from what they've added to it. I've got my gloves on, and actually it holds up really nice. And I can make my burger as big, fat, as I want to. And then I just put a browning on my burger, just enough to put that like golden touch on both sides. You can use a griddle, folks. And the longer this sits, the more it adapts uh, you know, takes on that moisture and it tightens up a little bit more. Those really look like the real thing. I know. Don't you love them? Oh, I know you love them. <laughs> I get normally eight thick burgers out of here. Right. Um, one of the things I do on this burger is I, because I don't want to cook it all the way in the pan because if I cook it all the way in the pan, I, I, I'll get more browning on the outside than I will in the middle. So it, as soon as I get that browning on right. both sides, Rindle, I put it in the oven for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Right. 
and then it's ready to go. And I'm going to move some of this over to the side if you don't mind. And I, I hear it cooking there right now. Mm. And I'm going to grab the ones I've already made in the oven. They're hot, hot, hot. Now, if you notice, there is no oil on the top of my sheet. I do put a little oil on the bottom just for my, uh, to keep my paper right. down. So I think I have a bowl right here. And Brindle, if you'll grab you a bun there, guess what you get to do? All you right. Get to, and I can hear the burger starting to, and, and if you cook it on a lower heat, folks, you don't have to worry about it sticking so much. You know, and I, I use a lot of pans that are nonstick. So if I keep it on a medium to low, sure. I just let it cook a little bit longer to get that browning. Some right. people just might want to put it into the oven and do their browning along with their baking. That's fine. But let's get you a little spoon here. And what do you like on your burger? I like, now what kind of uh, it's mayonnaise a, is it, it? It's a vegan mayonnaise. Right. Most of the stores nowadays, Rindle, even Walmart, Kroger, depending on where you live, they have vegan mayonnaise on the shelf. I'm glad you did that. I like it on both sides. I know you do. I did I'm it I'm not so you. much on the mustard, but I know you like the mustard. I do. I like mustard. And you probably want... Oh, yeah. Ketchup. You want ketchup, too. See? I knew you were a ketchup kind of guy. Now, there are specialty ketchups up there that you like better than others. Well, in a lot of the stores as well now, they have ketchups that are made with raisins and fruit. Right. Because ketchup really has a lot of salt, oil, and sugar. sugar. A lot of sugar in it. So if you're watching your sugar intake, especially with your immune system, I suggest buying a ketchup that is um, sugar-free. And can you tell the difference? Because no. you're a ketchup eater. No. I'm not. Oh, let me go. Got to have it with oven fries, that's for sure. Yes, he loves it with his oven fries. I'm going to grab you a pickle. You're going to eat this, so it's okay for oh, me yeah. to Oh, yeah, I haven't it. had breakfast, by the way. Oh, you haven't? Nope. Shame on your wife. Shame well, on her. She was busy. She was. <laughs> I, I, you know what? You can take a bite if you would like to. Uh, I can't stop at one. <laughs> no, you can do that. But I, I will warn you, there is quite a bit of ketchup on there. Is so there? you might not. Mm -hmm, there is. Because well, I know where that ketchup's going to land. I'll just eat over this. Is it good? Mm. Is it good? <laughs> How's that taste? Mm. Good? You gotta try this. It's really good. <laughs> well, that's the newest burger. Um, I hope you guys will try mm -hmm. it. And we'll just go on to the next recipe. How about Sounds that? Sounds good. They're to gonna me. love it. For the chicken style potato salad, you will need six to eight medium cooked potatoes diced. One can green ripened olives, drained and sliced. One cup cucumbers, halved and sliced. One half cup celery chopped. One teaspoon mustard powder. One teaspoon garlic powder. Two tablespoons nutritional yeast flakes. One 16 ounce extra firm tofu cut into cubes. Two tablespoons McKay's chicken style seasoning vegan special, one half cup nutritional yeast flakes, one quarter cup fresh dill chopped, one and one quarter cup vegan mayonnaise. That was a mouthful too. It you've, was. You've had this <laughs> potato salad, haven't yes, you? Yes, I hope to have it soon. <laughs> Let's no get one on knew with you it. will. <laughs> no one knew you will. You know, this is how many for me on the potato salads? Is this four or five? I'm running I can out of number three, and I think there's four. Yes, yes. I think the roasted potato salad, right. the dill, lemon dill potato salad, and the southern potato salad. And Alexa, your granddaughter, likes oh. the first one. My granddaughter, for her birthday, I always give her a gift, of course, and a big bowl. I'm talking a bowl this size. This big, right here. Mm -hmm, a potato salad, and within two days, this little 100 pound. 14-year-old girl can woof down that potato salad, and I don't have to give her a gift, but of course she's my granddaughter, I do. Uh, this one is a chicken style, which this is packed with protein, Randall. It's a little bit different. Some of you folks out there might even be on a diet to where you're eliminating your carbs. I say 
complex carbohydrates are good for you, but let's just say you are, and you're thinking, wow, I'd really like to try this recipe. I would just suggest if you were doing that to lightly uh, steam some cauliflower florets, mm -hmm. then bake them in the oven to get them really done crispy, because you don't want a mushy potato salad, and then use the cauliflower sure. rindle instead of the potatoes, if that's what you want to do. I always use organic potatoes, and this man, he can tell the difference. There's a big difference. I, I bought non-organic. There is. I bought non-organic, and because we in, in our local town, I can't find them. I have to go to Columbus to pick them up, and I bought a few and cooked them, and he kept saying, what's wrong with these potatoes? And I'm like, I don't know. I can't tell the difference, really. I want you to know I went and bought the organic mm -hmm. again, and he said, now these potatoes are better. Right. And so he's the one that did that. I have a big chunk here, which is usually about a pound, 14 ounces to a pound, on the tofu. I've already squeezed as much of the water out as I can. And I'm going to slice it right down the middle. And then I'm going to make my cubes. And do you remember back in the day, Rendell, when they had shake and bake? Yes. When you'd watch that on TV right. and they'd come out. I remember a little girl said, we had shake and bake and I helped. And With she was from the South. Very strong Southern very accent. Very strong Southern accent. Okay, I've got my nutritional yeast flakes. I'm going to hand that to you, honey. And then I have my chicken style seasoning. And so I'm just going to kind of shake mm -hmm. that around a little bit. I do this on purpose. And then I put my tofu in here. Now normally I have a pan that I put in the oven with this tofu once I've, I've um, dredged it or shake, shook it, shook it, shook it. Anyway, Where's my English? It's in there. Where's my English? Sh shook it up. Looky there. You talk about so easy, guys. Look, it's already shaken up. It's already all coated, mm -hmm. nice and coated. Each piece here has a nice coating on it. Works and really I, well. It does, and I just put that on the pan. Now, I already pre-prepared some of the tofu for you because it would take too long. But normally what I do is I take this tofu here and I put it on a pan. I always use parchment paper because I don't use oil to cook with. So I would just spread that out, put it in the oven, 350 degrees for probably about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Every, every oven is different. So, you know, cook that at what's best for you. You'll see it. It'll have that golden on it. And here is what the tofu looks like, Rendell, when we take it out of the oven. Doesn't that look nice? Looks very nice. You always like this tofu, don't you? Thank he you. He eats it all the time. <laughs> he loves it. But, but you, like, you like chicken before. You used to eat chicken, so, didn't so. you? So, so. Well, let's get to making the potato salad. Why don't we go ahead and dump the potatoes in. Here's a spoon for you. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put some of the, oh, is that enough tofu for you? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then we have celery. I love fresh vegetables. Radishes. Who would have thought radishes in a potato salad, but it works really good, doesn't it? Fresh cucumbers, yum. Now these olives are pretty available now. I've seen them in Walmart, Kroger, uh, most every grocery store that I've shopped at, I've noticed that they have the green olives in the can. Now I'm gonna add a little more nutritional yeast flakes here. My mustard powder, my garlic powder. I've never put garlic powder in a potato mm -hmm. salad before, but it really works in this one here. You taught me something about olives that I didn't know. I always thought they were green and dark olives. I didn't understand that there was a difference in what? Well, black olives have uh, a chemical they use in them to turn them black, but when they're ripened on the tree, they have brown spots and they're green normally. And if you'll hand me that spoon there. That was my, you know, you could put more 
uh, dill in this, that's depending on you, mm -hmm. uh, your likening, but I love dill. And this is the first recipe that I've made a potato salad with that I didn't put lemon juice in. Did really? you notice that? I didn't notice that. You don't I notice how I make it. You just, I just know the that end I result, it. that's all. And this is my vegan mayo. And folks, you can use a recipe out of one of your favorite cookbooks, maybe out of one of mine, or you can buy it at the store. I know everybody is busy working these days. I'm going to need the rest of that. Yes, let's just, let me get that out of here. Okay, thank you. And, you know, I always, in my recipes, folks, I, I say salt to taste. My salt to taste might not be your salt to taste. I did throw some in there, probably about a teaspoon worth uh, at best. I know my husband likes things with salt in them. I really don't eat that much salt. And so for that reason, I let you decide what you want. Mm -hmm. How does that look, Brenda? That looks really good. <laughs> really good. <laughs> I expected you to say that. You know that. Yum, yum. Do you want to try some? Sure. You know, this is your bowl. That's my bowl? That's your bowl. I bought that for you. And where is my spoon? Uh, your spoon's right here. Would you like to try that? I would. Tell me if it tastes good or not. I can't wait for the day he actually tries something and he says, I don't like it. Oh, Really good. You know, he did. I made a white bean chili. And my sweet husband, we hadn't been married a year. You've seen that look on his face. And I said, how do you like that chili? And he looked at me and he said, you don't have to cook that one again. And hey, I said. I'm a, I'm a southern boy. He is. Chili is not white. <laughs> that's what he said. I, he said. I mean, it tasted good, but that's not what I assumed he, to be he, chili. So I've never made the white bean chili again. <laughs> well, we're going to go on to our next recipe, which is the simple slaw. Simple slaw. Four to five cups cabbage, thinly sliced, one third cup fresh lemon juice, two tablespoons heaping celery seed, one half cup vegan mayonnaise, and salt to taste. You like the mayonnaise in that recipe. Yes, I, I do. I guarantee you do. <laughs> I, I like lemon in everything, so I love lemon. But you know, this recipe here was a design. Do you remember where we were at? in North Carolina at my friend Barbara's. Yes. And we were there and we were making a dog recipe and I said, dog needs a slaw. A dog needs a slaw. I'm sorry, I like slaw on my dog. And that was the first for me. I've never had slaw on a hot dog. You have it, but what did on you think? On the side, yes. I, right, but what did you think about the slaw on the dog? I still eat it on the side. <laughs> he still eats it on the side, but what did you think of the coleslaw? It's good, it's great. You know, one thing I do when I make coleslaw is I prefer slicing it thinly and I will take a knife and slice through. How you do your uh, cabbage is up to you folks, really it is, but this is the way I like to do mine. And, but, and I'm going through it with my gloves to pick out any big pieces and that is a trash can over here on the side. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add my lemon. Little lemon, do you think, Rendell, or a, a lot, lot of lemon? lemon? You like a lot of lemon. In this <laughs> recipe, you will notice I have no onions, but I have celery seed. Oh, this is so, really, it is good, celery seed. And then I just put in a little bit of salt, and I want to stir that around a little bit before I start. Yeah, get all my parts that I miss out here <laughs> um, from my bowl. And then I want to put in some vegan mayonnaise. And I don't want a ton of mayonnaise in here, folks. I, don't, I mean, that's up to you, but I just want to coat the slaw. Uh, just having the salt, the lemon, the celery seed. And you might say, Melody, why didn't you put celery in there? You can't. That's up to you. My, my uh, quote I always do is, there are so many directions to the same destination. Choose whichever you like. Same way with cooking. I like that quote. You like that quote? I came up with that quote. Did you yes, like you that? Did. Yeah, I did. But it's a truth. You know, so many people say, oh, Melody, I'd love to eat this particular <laughs> dish you made, but it had something in it that right. they don't eat. And I said, just don't put it in. Make it your own. And really, Rendell, that's it. It's that. That's why I called it simple slaw. Simple slaw. Yes. 
and then did you want to taste it? I certainly do. Yeah, I seen that little <laughs> <laughs> spoon. Where's your spoon? No, here's I'll use a fork. fork. Here's a fork. You can have the fork. Let me get you some of this out. And you really don't like to eat slaw on your dog? No. Really? I just, uh, I guess it's the way you're raised. Is it? We just didn't do that. You didn't? Well, hey, not that's saying okay. it's bad. It's right, just it's just not, not the I'm way you ate it. To. Potato, potato, isn't it the same thing? Yes. That's it. Simple. Didn't get enough that time. Didn't get enough? You need more? Need more? <laughs> Maybe I should chop it up a little smaller for him to get it in. A spoon probably would have been better. A spoon would have been better. Um, you know... It's as, very good, though. It is. And the longer it sits, the longer this sits in the refrigerator and it really melts to the uh, it does. flavors, it's better. Uh, my daughter-in-law, who is not plant-based, she is very critical of different recipes because she's a good cook. And I made this, of course, and I always have them try it first. And you know, she was really ultimately surprised. And her and I both made an attempt to just eat it all by itself. So it's a standalone food. You can eat it all by yourself. Uh, what I mean, all by itself. You don't have to have another food with it. It's, it's a really good salad, a uh, light meal in itself. Do you remember that cabbage we got in New York? I Upstate do. New York. I there was do. a cabbage. I'm serious. It was this big. <laughs> it was you. I've never. We ate on it for, for a the week. whole time we were there. We ate on it for a <clears> week <throat> and just kept cabbage and potatoes, coleslaw, everything we could think, steamed cabbage. And we were got ready to leave. We had a half of a cabbage. And I said, we got to find somebody to give this cabbage to. <laughs> so we did. We passed it on to somebody else <laughs> who ate it. But I'd never seen a cabbage so big in my life. We've got pictures of that yes, somewhere. Yes, we do. It was, it was actually Alvin Mowry, our friend Alvin. He was holding it out like a ball. He was Watermelon it size. Yes, it was, it was huge. Well, this wouldn't be complete unless I went on to the next recipe, which is going to be our incredible carrot dog. Incredible carrot dog, six to eight carrots, similar size, one half cup Bragg's liquid aminos, one cup of water, one tablespoon liquid smoke, one tablespoon mustard, one tablespoon onion powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of coriander. Actually, I have to admit, this is probably one of my favorite recipes. Um, but I never ate hot dogs before. I didn't like the ingredients in them. Growing up as a kid, I didn't want to eat a hot dog. I, I knew it was in it. <laughs> Couldn't do it. When they took and at our school they took us to a hot dog factory. Big mistake. Big mistake. So for a kid, I thought, all that stuff in there. No, no, no. I'm a visual, very and visual. What happened to you the first time you smelled these when you cooked them? Well, here's the thing. Hot dogs have a specific smell. Yes, they there do. is an aroma that they have and a flavor. And when I decided to do this recipe, I said, I really want this carrot dog to taste like a regular hot dog. Mm -hmm. And so I went out on the internet and I started doing that searching. Right. And I really thought, what is the best recipe? What are the ingredients? So then I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I need to go read the ingredients off of one of the name brand uh, hot dogs. Mm -hmm. And I did, I started to read them and I noticed there was one one seasoning rindle straight across that was in every one of them. It was coriander. I don't even know that I'd ever used it before. Maybe I've never heard of it. Well, most people haven't, honestly, but it was coriander. So what I decided to do is I thought, okay, I'm just going to put coriander into the, se the seasonings I'm making mm -hmm. to make the hot dog. It is a process, folks, I'm telling you. If you'll notice that my carrots, whenever I buy carrots, I buy them singly, and I try to just shape them a little bit like, like a dog. And so on, on these are no different. And of course, they're hard. They haven't been cooked yet. And then what I do is I take my water, and Rindle, I'm gonna have you put that off to the side, and I'm gonna turn this on here real quick. Okay. And then I put my, Bragg's liquid aminos. If you can't have soy, do the coconut aminos. So just do that instead. This is my smoke, my liquid smoke. This is my mustard powder and my onion powder. 
and my garlic and my coriander. All of it's in there together. Now, I really don't need to add um, salt to this because of the Bragg's liquid aminos. I don't. You might want to. That's totally up to you. But then I stir it around in there really good. And because of time for TV, I really don't have time to cook them because they need to marinate. So I take the dog, I bring this to a heat, and I put my, I call them dogs, my carrots, down in the marinade. And I cook them for exactly eight minutes with the lid on because I do not want my carrot to be soft and soggy. I want it to just be like what they call al dente. So it's still got a little... Consistency of a hot dog. Well, yes, but it has to have a little crunch or a little bit of... Um, not done this or you know raw in the middle because what I'm going to do then is I get a container that would fit a dog so I'm going to show you here I'm going to take one out see here it fits in there perfect and then just like the one I have over here now how long do you put them in there normally well this is after they've cooked so this container I have ready. This is from the ones I'm cooking now because for the sake of TV, we wouldn't have enough time. But I do eight minutes exactly. Mm -hmm. And I just stick my fork in it to see, you know, okay, that's good. But then sometimes you put them in there overnight. I always do. I take mm -hmm. the carrot out, put it in the dish. The dish is empty. Right here, the dish is empty. And then I cover it, I fill it with that marinade. And then it could be a plastic container. Just make sure it's the size of your carrot. And I like the carrot to be the size of my bun. I hate for a, a hot dog to get <laughs> hidden in the bun somewhere. And then I put it in the refrigerator. Now, I like to wait at least 8 to 24 hours because I want to get rid of the carrot flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'm depending on this marinade to absorb through the dog and to give me that best flavor, okay? Then I can pull, if I make eight, 10, 12, you could double, triple the recipe, it's up to you. I make a lot. I've actually made a dozen at a time, right. and in a week they're gone because if somebody comes over to visit, I'll say, hey, do you want a carrot dog? Yes, <laughs> and they'll eat the carrot dog. So um, that depends on how long it lasts Sometimes for you. Sometimes they're not that enthusiastic when you say, do you want a carrot dog? Have you noticed that? That takes a little bit of education. They'll say taste. a carrot can't be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my idea. I wish I would have came up with it, but it is my recipe. So I, I, um, sir, I probably do at least 10 to 12 when right. I make them for us. And I usually take three out, no more than four. And then I put a grill on them to, make, to give them a little bit better look of a dog. Can you smell this, Rendell. Can you smell? That smells like a hot dog, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It really does. So I put that grill mark on there. It doesn't need to cook. It is cooked. It just needs to brown right. and get hot where it's been in the refrigerator. Your remaining dogs and, and marinade can stay in the refrigerator for at least two, a week to 10 days, and then that way, and doesn't I- Doesn't last that long at our house. Well, I, I was gonna say it doesn't usually last that long at our house. Now, I did not have a lid on this because I wanted you to see it, so I would start timing this right now because I'm seeing some bubbles for eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes, take the lid off, take my dogs out, pour my sauce on them. What's, uh, is that your plate? This is my bun. <laughs> you, what, what would you like on this bun, Rendell? I like mustard. Pickles. Mustard. A little bit of that cheese. Do you like ketchup? Yes, I do. I like both. I know you don't, but I like both on there. No, I'm, I'm okay with ketchup. Veginase too, but we don't have any Oh, this I moment. didn't bring any out. It's okay. Oh, bad me, bad me. Because you want to try it, right? Yes, I do. That looks like a lot of stuff on there, but is that what you do? You like that's, lots that's of pretty stuff. pretty close. Well, Slather a little pickle, a little pickle here. Oh, you want some pickle. Okay, let me get some pickle out. No, let's do the dog first. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Look at the charring. Hmm. Looks like a hot dog. It looks like it? the real thing. 
And then we'll put just a little bit of sweet relish. Would you like some cheese. vegan cheese on yes, your Yes, I would. You know what that dog's missing, don't you? What's that? Coleslaw. Oh, on the side. On the side. Well. That looks good. I can't make it any prettier than that, but it just depends on how it tastes, no matter how good it looks. But we eat with our eyes, folks, so you always want to make sure <laughs> that the food looks nice before you, do you a good eat job. it. good job. I Shall do. I take a bite of it? Oh, that's up to you unless you want me to eat it, but I can. It's got wheat. Oh, okay. I'm allergic to wheat. All right, let's try this. Should I catch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I ought to ask him a question right now. This is the perfect opportunity. <laughs> it's good, folks. It's good. Mm -hmm. Does it really taste like a hot dog? It tastes you, like the real thing. Have time. you eaten hot dogs before? Oh, yeah. Okay, so he knows what they taste like. Vegan I, or otherwise. Vegan or otherwise. And I think I, I missed what Rendell was asking me earlier, folks. I didn't answer the question because it was kind of, you're probably thinking, oh, no. But when I cooked these the very first time, and I have to tell you, any time I'd see in a hot dog or people eating them, I had that kind of gag reflex. I really did. And so when I lifted the lid off of my dogs, right. my first experiment, I had that same reflex. I, I was kind of like, oh no, that's it. That's the hot dog, it tastes just like it. Went overnight, tried it the next day. It wasn't the seasoning that bothered me, it was the smell the that aroma. associated, yes, with the re real hot dog. I was shocked, I think I ate two dogs and I haven't <laughs> eaten I, I don't, even vegan dogs are vegetarian when I eat vegetarian food. Right. I don't think I hardly ever ate one before. So I liked it. I took it to a potluck real quick. I <laughs> took this to a potluck and they ate it and they come over to me and said, Melody, somebody said you brought those hot dogs here. And I said, I did. And they said, well, I didn't think you ate meat. And I said, I don't. And he said, oh, you just <laughs> cooked them for us. And I said, no. They're carrots. And he said, it's impossible. I tasted it. That was a hot dog. And I said, no, it's impossible. That was a carrot. That's right. So we're going to move on to the next recipe. Okay. How about the coconut flavor balls? All right. Sounds good. Coconut flavor balls, 15 medjool pitted dates, roughly chopped, one cup pecans raw, one cup walnuts raw, one third cup nut butter, one quarter cup unsweetened coconut flakes, one quarter cup vegan white chocolate or carob chips, one quarter cup maple syrup, two thirds cup unsweetened coconut flakes. Well, Rendell, you finally get a dessert. All right. <laughs> he loves his dessert and it's mostly my fault. I really try to eliminate sugar. You know, sugar compromises the immune system. Yes, it does. And we need a strong immune system. Especially build these the, days. I know, build those T cells up. And so sugar is just something I've been eliminating out of the diet. Mm -hmm. I have to confess though, my husband knows I'm a confessor. I've had two desserts because we had two birthdays this year. I've had two desserts since September. I can't is, say that. I No, I know you can. And that's been uh, almost a year, uh, uh, close to a year that I have not had wow. a dessert but those two. And I felt like somebody just knocked me down with the truck. That's because I'm not used to it. But this is what I call a healthy dessert. Okay. These are alternatives. This is God's sugar is what I call it. So these aren't as bad. So, so you some of these them. are snack food, food. Anyway, the dates, the uh -huh. walnuts, the, nuts. the pecans. Yes, yes. Well, the serving size, if you just wanted those as a snack, what's the average size? You have to you be use? able to close your hand when you're eating nuts, so that consists of a serving size. So if you're eating raw nuts, hopefully are much better for you than the processed nuts. Right. So as long as you can close your hand, I wish I had a bigger so hand. So that's for a that serving. Purpose. Close yes. your hand on a. That's, that's a, a serving. serving size, actually. Okay. Yes. So what we're going to do. So we're going to put this little dish together. Why don't you go ahead and take that lid off for me? And it's hard to do. <laughs> we're going to dump and we're going to pour. Thank you. Dump it in. Uh, I want this coconut. Oh, I, I've got to show the viewers this because I, I want them to see what I have here. These are actually carob chocolate chips 
and they're vegan. And they're not that easy to find, honestly. I did go on the internet and found them. And they're a little pricey, but you know, how many times you get to have a recipe that actually has a vegan white chocolate? Um, so I bought these and I've used them. They've been really good. I've made bark out of them around mm -hmm. the Christmas holidays. You remember, I even made, I made a, a candy cane white bark popcorn. I didn't know what bark was. Other bark folks is whenever, might not know. Well, bark is whenever you make something out of a chocolate or, uh, and it hardens. And, okay. then you, and then you break it up, so like a bark. Okay. And, but I also use a vegan carob chip that is peppermint. And I also have just regular vegan carob chips that have no flavoring, just the carob itself. And the supermarkets now have a lot of chocolate, dark chocolate chips that are vegan. And they're made with stevia, so they're even sugar-free. Right. So, I mean, we have a lot of options. And I've seen them at grocery stores. I've seen them. Uh, Walmart carries them as well. So I see them out there quite frequently. So now that I've given that little history, I'm sorry, you can put those in. Carry away with them because I think it really helps in this recipe. And then the maple syrup. All right. I'll give you the maple syrup, you can have that. So it's gonna be noisy for just a little bit because we're gonna start this machine. I think yeah. it's on. Yes. Ready? See, I didn't put it on right. Okay. <laughs> That didn't take very long. Well, it's not done yet. Oh, okay. Silly. <laughs> now this is an almond butter. I have used the butters that are, um, that have chia seed and multiple uh, nuts in them. I just don't use peanut butter. I'm allergic to it. Is this and, the almond butter you made? No, this is just the regular almond butter I bought at the store. So you can use any nut butter you want to, but you really need the fat in that nut butter. So I'm going to turn it back on. Because it's, what's going to happen here, Rendell, is it's going to go into like a clump. Okay. And then that means it's all incorporated well. This takes a few minutes. And what okay. I'm going to do, I didn't put all of it in there. And the reason I wondered I, about that. Well, the reason I, I had a reason for that. I wanted to see some of your nut butters seem to have a little bit more oil in them, even though I buy the nut butters that are just 100% of the nut. But I just wanted to make sure. And that I didn't want it to be greasy. See it starting to, see it starting to clump at the bottom here? Yeah. This is exactly what we want. All right. I'm going to let you have that. And then I'm going to pop this off. And I know that's a big bowl, but I want it out of this one. I'll use the knife here. Is that all that? Yep, that's enough. That's enough. And then I know the recipe called for coconut twice. There was a reason. And that's because I am going to roll this like a ball. You can also make these like bars. You can flatten it out like on a cookie sheet and make a bar. I usually use a rolling pin. I put parchment paper underneath. Now this is a rindle size <laughs> dessert right here. And I just kind of press it on. Why don't you pull that dish over here? Oh, these are so good. The camera people are hungry, so they'll eat these when we're done with them. You think they will? I think they will. I think they will, too. You know, I had an idea the other night when I was making some of these uh, treats, is that you can actually melt the carob and make like a bonbon and just dip it in the, once it's at this consistency, you can dip it in that carob powder or carob chips that's melted wouldn't that be awesome, you know, Randall? Normal, We're going to try that. Normal people have dreams. <laughs> you dream recipes. <laughs> I do. I'm all, I should have been a professional 
test kitchen chef who stayed in a uh, test kitchen because my husband can tell you if I, it's hard for me to go to sleep at night and I lay there thinking of recipes to make. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, or so maybe many, it's good. Yeah, so many f friends that she's on the phone talking with and they say, what if you, and what if you, and what if you did? <laughs> and then the next day they both do that. Yeah, yeah. If I get an idea, I mean, it's like, um, I just thank God, Rendell. God has given our, uh, such amazing minds. Amen. And when we pray and ask the Lord mm -hmm. to give us something, he, he does. He wants to please sure. his children. And there's so many times I go to my kitchen, especially when a recipe turns out great. You can tell I prayed over it. <laughs> and I do. I ask the Lord to bless my kitchen. I don't want to waste ingredients. Sure. And I want to make a recipe that's as healthy as possible mm -hmm. um, to give them a better way of life. You know, you and I both have had health issues. Sure. Um, I used to be diabetic. I used to have heart disease. I used to take medication. I used to be much larger than I am now. I was almost 300 pounds and that just didn't happen by accident mm -hmm. because I heard something one time and it just resonated with me. If food got you there, food has to get you out. That's right. It has to get you out. So it's just a reverse of what I did. And I got to thinking, I lost my dad at a very young age. He was in his early 50s. I lost a brother at 50, and I lost another brother at the age of 45. Folk, that is too young to die of a lifestyle disease. And how healthy were you compared to them? At oh, one I was point. much sicker than they were. I was, I was obese. I was very heavy at that time. So I knew if I didn't make a change, I was going to die. Right. And I, I, have, I have my grandbabies and my life to live. And I think, you know, Lord, you gave me this body that is supposed to be treated like a holy temple. And I've just totally, totally abused it. And I asked the Lord for forgiveness. And I said, Lord, if you teach me uh, what to do. And I knelt down in my kitchen and I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, you taught me how to cook once. You can teach me how to cook again. And God has been so faithful, Rendell. Yes, he I has. have created more recipes as a plant-based chef than I ever did as not being a plant-based chef. And, and to hear the testimonies of people on what food has done for them in their mm -hmm. life. You know, I know it's crazy. You think, oh, that woman's just nuts. She cooks all the time. I do. But I'm always trying something for people uh, where they don't have to go out and eat the bad food, where they can mm -hmm. still have good flavors at home. Uh, just like we travel all over the United States doing health seminars. We've gone into many churches right. and different organizations teaching people about uh, healthy living, about, mm -hmm. about how to change their diet. And I, even you, that's how my husband and I met because he called me, he was losing weight at that time. And how many medicines were you on, Randall? I think I was on about four or five. <clears throat> four or five. And when we married... Counting the baby aspirin. Counting the baby aspirin. When we married, Rendell went from that many recipes... Uh, I'm sorry, recipes. <laughs> Rendell went from that many um, prescriptions mm -hmm. down to zero. Zero. And I noticed one of the things that he said is, I can't eat this much food and lose weight. Because you were under the assumption that you had to eat little bit of food Mm -hmm. to gain, to lose weight because right. of the calorie, you know, how many calories to gain a pound. And I said, no, Rinda, when you eat whole food, you can eat more food. And I said, you don't have to weigh, you don't have to measure your food, you don't have to count calories. But I said, what you do need to do is walk for exercise. And Rinda, you like to walk. I uh, mean, I was an exercise buff when I started losing weight. Oh yeah. You, he used to be quite a runner. He used to run a lot, played football in high school and college. So he was used to activity, but getting older and getting a little sedentary, the mm -hmm. weight comes on. And so he was trying to regain his health. He wasn't used to food being that much of a priority over the exercise. So I said, you know, exercise is usually about 15% of health. Wow. But, but we need to exercise. Sure I'm not, we do. Yes. And so he changed. And I remember the first time we went and did, we went to Florida and we was doing a seminar down there and he was eating and I was cooking the food. I usually travel with all my equipment and I cook for us. And he's like, I'm losing weight. And actually I lost a couple of pounds 
uh, while we were on the road and I wasn't exercising and it was curious to me that I was eating volumes of food but it was good food with minimal or no fat. Well it was it was quite amusing because when we got married he had this one day a week that he took out of his schedule to eat whatever he wanted to eat kind of. You said it was your what was it you, you called it that you um, kind of it was your gift of what he had accomplished during the week. And I said, well, then why would you eat junk food <laughs> that, that caused the problem in the first place? And he said, well, that's the way I did it. But he worked hard. I remember him walking all the time in the gym. We were on the phone talking. And I'm like, you know, Randall, you, it's good to walk, good to exercise. We need that. Body, uh, our body was mm -hmm. created that way. But you did lose a weight. Yes. And I'll tell you what, it, it's been a, an amazing journey and I love what we do together because we're out here Amen. serving the Lord. Amen. Cooking our way out there, I should say, but we really enjoy it. And you know, if you want to get a hold of us or you want to contact our ministry to maybe come to your church or just call me and ask for recipes, we're trying to set up Zoom channels where we can converse personally or in a group. Please feel free to give us a call. We want to talk to you and meet you and maybe just ask about our transition, you know, how we started or what you can do to make your life better, especially to get rid of some of these lifestyle disease folks. God created us to have a good mind Man. and body. Thank you so much. Did you like the recipes that you just saw and you want to know more? Well, you can write to Melody Cavanis at 33 Parkview Court, Howard, Ohio, 43028. That's 33 Parkview Court, Howard, Ohio, 43028. If you would like to email Melody, you can do so at melodycavanis at gmail.com. That's melodycavanis at gmail.com. We did it. We did it. Yes. I cooked my way through this hour and you ate your way through this yes, hour. Yes, I did. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I am the official taste. You are the official. You know, folks, he needs a bib here that says Rendell <laughs> Cavanis, the official taster. Don't look at that one little spot. You did. I you did. You did. Oh, I find more shirts in this closet with, with <laughs> stains on them. And I'm like, I know what he was eating there. First of all, we had the burger. Oh my goodness, that is such, what do you, uh, of all the burgers, and I know you like the O-Burger. Well, you make four or five. I, yes. Four, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. That one tastes the most like meat of all. They're all good, and probably the oat burger is one of my favorite, mm -hmm. but this mm -hmm. one tastes like meat. Like a, like a meat. Like a, like and a it's fat-free, guys. It's fat-free. There's no added fat to that, except for condiments that you might put on it yourself. Right. But then the slaw. Now this fresh, simple slaw can be made in minutes, just minutes. Mm -hmm. It takes longer to cut the cabbage, but you might have a better way to cut it than it is to make the recipe. So it, it's delicious, it's refreshing, it's always a winner. The potato salad. And I like it on the side, not he on the He likes it on the side. The potato salad, here's your protein, because we put the, the tofu, the chicken like in it. Right. The hot dogs, which mm -hmm. are really made out of Carrot. <laughs> Carrot dogs. And then finally, we have the, the uh, tasty date and carob uh, balls. Oh, they are so delicious. He forgot to eat one, but I know he will. Oh, Rindel, it's been a whole hour here. I can't believe time nice. goes by so slow. But folks, do what you can to eat the way God originally designed us to eat, don't you think? I think eat so. Eat from the garden, eat more of it. God will bless you in your health. You will feel better. You have a longer life. You need to get a hold of somebody. Please contact 3ABN. You can get the recipes there. Thank you so much.